Well, hello and welcome to tonight's video. A very special video tonight here in the Beauty and Sound Summer 2023 Organ Festival. Because in front of me in the BIS music room stroke dining room, I have six young, enthusiastic and very talented young organists who are all itching to play this organ once again. Tonight, um, tonight's organ uh, masterclass is hosted by Francesca Massey, who's um, a really fabulous organist with um, a wealth of experience, of cathedral experience, accompanying experience, conducting experience, and importantly for tonight, teaching experience. So I'm gonna hand over to our first organist tonight, who's uh, Tim van Eldren, who's going to hop onto the organ bench Tim has actually come all the way from the Netherlands, especially uh, for this, so I'm very grateful. Uh, Tim discovered the organ at 13, and um, this September, he says, he hopes to successfully complete an organ scholarship um, audition at a British cathedral. So hopefully, Tim, tonight's organ masterclass will take you one step further to achieving that dream. So I'll hand you the microphone and enjoy. So first of all, a welcome from me. So I'm Francesca uh, Massey, um, and we've got a great array of pieces um, this evening um, to listen to. We've got some um, uh, brilliant pieces from the Baroque era, uh, from Bach, from Buxtehude, from Bruns. Um, we've got some romantic works uh, with Carl Gellert and some Berlman. So we've got a, a great variety. Um, and um, I'm really looking forward to working um, on these pieces with you. Um, hearing some of you practicing, um, I'm, I think I'm not going to have very much to say to some of you because it's sounding fabulous. Um, but, and what I do say, obviously some things um, you may not like, and that's, that's fine. Um, interpretation is exactly that. And what someone might say to you, um, another person might say something different. So um, we're just sharing ideas around, and I want this to be an interactive process as well. So if you have any questions um, on any bits that you're struggling with, or just um, uh, any advice that you, that you want on, on, on anything, then you know, please um, don't hesitate to say. Um, so, would you like to tell us what you're going to play for us? Uh, yes, I would very much like uh, to tell you what I'm going to play. I'm going to play uh, the Bach Fantasia in G major, the pièce d'orgue, which has been featured on Beauty and Sound uh, quite a few times. And it's actually last year, the recording which I did on the Folan sample set, that got me into this piece and I thought, well, how hard can it be? Uh, after practicing a full week on the first two pages, I thought, well, how hard can it be? It turned the page, got into the middle section and thought, oh dear, I'm never going to get through this. Uh, however, after a year of playing and practicing this, I think it's pretty much performance ready now. So I would like to uh, have this masterclass to um, improve my playing and interpretation of this piece. Excellent. Good. Um, the way it's going to work is um, with most of the pieces, um, we'll hear it through um, and then we'll work on it. As this is a fairly lengthy um, middle section, of this piece, we might just do a bit of the middle section and, and then skip on to the to the um, final <coughs> section, just um, so that then um, we don't run out of time. Um, but but then we will hear everything at some point. So um, if I stop you, don't don't worry. <laughs> okay.
<laughs> that's fine. Um, so we'll come back to that section. Okay. Uh, if you want to skip on to the to the third section, so oh, on the, the next section. page. Yeah. Lovely. Um, Thank you. Um, so, should we um, actually work backwards as we've, we've um, recently done this section, so it's uh, fresh in our minds. Yes. Um, so actually, I like what you're doing here with the, the registration with this being a bit lighter, actually. Yes. Um, often um, you hear this uh, played um, as a sort of continual build-up, so each section getting louder, um, which, which also works. Um, um, but it, it, this, this is quite nice. It sort of then mirrors the opening, the, the, yes. the registration, doesn't it? And this is in the sort of what we call the steel lute, which is um, kind of lute style. So um, it's nice when you hear all those lovely individual notes. Um, and with that in mind, I wonder if we can be a little bit more articulate um, with the with the notes to so just make sure that they don't overlap and, and sort of build up a chord. So we want to be able to hear um, the clarity of, 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 of each of the individual the notes. I think the speed is really good for that, for, the, for this section. Um, but just make sure our hands are working a bit harder da, 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 so we can hear all that, uh, that, that sort of intricate clarity. Should we just try um, just a bit at the start of the section? Yes. Great, that's really good. That's that's really nice. So when I say articulate, I don't necessarily mean it has to be detached. Um, you know, often those two words get a bit confused. Um, just just as I say, just the clarity is making sure that our hands don't overlap in this kind of uh, figuration. So just making sure that um, that that we're hearing all the notes equally. Um, with the pedals, um, sometimes these crotchets are um, a little bit long. I think they can be a bit shorter. Yes. Um, so especially in quite a re reverberant acoustic. Um, yes. So um, think about cutting them a little bit shorter. Um, and always um, in Baroque music, you'll always find this, this kind of upbeat figuration. Bum, bum. You know, so you always want the, the, the upbeat. To be, if you think about um, bowing, a lot of, a lot of um, Baroque articulation can be related to string playing. Um, if you think of up, down with the bowing, dum, bum, bum, oh, yes. bum, like yes. that. Yeah, so weak, strong. Um, so if, if you can sort of punctuate the, the rhythm um, of, with that, with the pedals. Should we just try just a, a bit of that again? Uh, yes.
as well um, just take care where the cords change um, just so you might just want to go through this just make sure we've got all the accidentals um, so do the, some of these you know middling ones with the sharps and just just to make sure that um, they're all absolutely yes. um, accurate um, the other things to just to make sure that we start that that, that at the start of the the hands um, really aligns with yes. the pedals sometimes we're a little bit out of out of sync with that um, so just um, give yourself an anchor on the beats <laughs> um, that's that's really good so stylistically that's great if we just skip to the end um, and we'll deal with the yes this final cadence um, um, some people think there's some symbolism in this piece, um, which is um, related a bit to the sort of the ascension. Um, so there's all these rising phrases, um, but in this section, there's also this sort of chromatic descent with that pedal. Da, yes. da, da, da. It's like we're being dragged down into hell, um, but we finally rise triumphantly at the end. Um, and um, related to that, there's a, there's a sort of interplay between the B naturals and the B flats in this piece. So it's predominantly B naturals because we're in G major, but there are some really key um, B flats um, which have, have some significance. And one of them is this one right at the top there. Um, it's, so this, this is the figuration that's rising and it's like, it's just thrown in just as a sort of final kind of spanner in the works to think, ah, oh, we're not quite safe yet, but then we have this final flourish in G major. Um, so I think let's make something of that note there. Da, 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 da. Bom, ba, da, da, da. And then don't be in a rush to 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 go on with that final flourish. So just leave us leave us in a, a sort of moment of suspense there. Um, to you know what what's going to happen next. Um, so maybe if we just lead into that, should we um, um, pick it up somewhere? Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. longer last chord as it's you know the end of a very long piece we might just want to sit yes. there a bit longer um, but I liked what you did you can perhaps be even more flamboyant with that start that scale pretty slowly and then and then move on the tempo exactly and yes then slow down all the way again if that's fine yeah and then da -da 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 -dum, bum, bum, make it a bit more final at the end yes um, should we just do that that final cadence one more time And you might want to take some of that with the right hand uh, rather than take the left yes. hand all the way up and then um, but that that's up to you um, that's, that's a, a matter of personal choice okay good let's go back to the middle section now so if we can um, go back a few pages um, so um, have you heard um, the variation of this which has lots of ornaments has anyone heard that one that's um, so um, is that the Volcar version uh, yes, Valter, yes, um, and, and, and other um, uh, copies as well, um, which is, is where it's thought that this piece might have got its, its uh, subtitle of Pièce d'Org from. So it's obviously quite French inspired um, yes. and that there are some copies which exist, um, which, which have a lot of ornamentation um, in it. Um, and it, I personally, um, I quite like that that version, um, and uh, you know you can put some sort of Enegal rhythms in it and it sort of make it more sort of French overture like in a way, um, so a bit a bit more sort of grand. Yes. Um, so it's, it's worth looking. It's in the appendix of the Baron Writer edition if you want to to look that up. So somewhere um, around here, I usually do a trill as well, just a little. Oh yes, so yeah. The um, the odd additional trill is absolutely yes. you know fine um, generally. Um, Let's think about the tempo of this. I noticed at one point you speeded up. Um, so 
ideally, whatever tempo you set at the beginning, yes. if you can then keep that going, obviously there will be some, you know, some bits where you, you kind of place a cadence and that's, that's absolutely yes. fine. But the overall meter just needs to remain constant. Um, so should we just start the beginning of the section and just think, um, so it's, it's marked grave, but it is two in a bar, isn't it? So it's finding, finding a good, um, happy medium for those, those two, <laughs> two things. have a bit more movement I think yes, it's good um, bit so I think the grave marking um, it, it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be really slow as I say it is two in a bar um, it's more a um, indication of, of kind of a mood isn't it and what what would what what's your um, feeling of the mood with this section well I think this should be a little bit slower so at least stately for two reasons and that is the first that on an organ uh, on which Bach would have played this, which would have been mechanical. Mm -hmm. I learned this on a mechanical organ as well. Uh, when you couple manuals, especially when you couple free manuals for the grave section, to play it a little bit faster with uh, the same accuracy is incredibly hard. And at some points uh, it falters, especially in trills. And on the fourth page, I tend to add, in this case, a lot of reeds, but on a smaller organ, just the great trumpet for the final Yes. And then, of course, in a especially reverberant acoustic, with all those reeds on, I don't want to slow down to half the tempo. I slow down a little bit, so I tend to keep the tempo in the middle section uh, stately, mm -hmm. depending on the organ and the acoustic, also to accommodate that last registration change. Sure, yes. Um, and that, that is an important thing, um, um, factors to, to think about regarding tempi. Um, are you know the the acoustic absolutely in a, in a more reverberant building you you do need to play things slower. Um, one is that the rate of harmonic change, so how often the harmonies change. And in this one, it's it's not so much as it? it's usually on the min impulse. Um, you know, so so you can get away um, with it being um, having having the momentum while still yes. keeping that stately feel. Well, um, it does depend on the on the registration as the well. Yes, yes, well, yes. Um, and on that thing, because um, it's quite dense uh, texture. So we've got a sort of five part texture going on with lots of um, lots of suspensions. Um, it, it is quite dense, isn't it? I wonder if we might thin the registration out just a little bit. I know so you, you were talking about coupling the three manuals yes. together on it. Um, you wouldn't necessarily need to do that. You know, um, the, the divisions on a Baroque organ are usually um, sort of self-sufficient in a way yes. that you don't have to you know, couple everything together. Um, so we could perhaps uh, think about thinning it out a bit. Um, and I think, you know, maybe um, even with an eight foot reed in the pedals rather than a 16 foot reed, sometimes, again, that, that's quite a French thing to do. And that would be quite in keeping yes. with this sort of style um, and would, would just mean that it's not so sort of heavy at the bottom, yes. bottom end of the, of the texture. Um, uh, just be careful with the suspensions as to which um, and all the tied notes as to which ones um, you know how far they're tied sometimes we're just holding on to some notes a bit yes. a bit long um so so listen very carefully to the to the harmonies and if something doesn't sound right it may be that you're holding on one too many notes yes <laughs> the problem um, with the eight foot reed i think is it, it gets quite high here and especially does, one yes, of those the balance, french yeah. baroque uh trumpets I played a French Baroque organ once, and the trumpet was excessively loud mm. in the pedal. You have to exactly. You have to suit it to the yes. the organ that you're playing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I would as I say keep keep the tempo consistent throughout throughout this section, yes. um, and um, you know enjoy the suspensions. You know, play into them. Um, but I think just make sure. Um, 
with a combination of uh, thinning out some of the registration and, and also perhaps being slightly less legato at times um, in, in, the, in the hands, um, just make sure we've got that clarity and it doesn't yes. all become you know, quite, quite dense. Um, you know, exactly. Um, but um, yes, here's, here is a, an, another one of these instances of this B flat here. So we have this big build up and then yes. we have the, it goes to the B flat right at the top where you might expect the B natural. So it's, it is quite a, uh, an important note in the, in the, um, in the piece, which is, which is quite uh, interesting. And should we just cover this cadence because we didn't hear this wonderful cadence before. So um, just, I'd just like to see what you're doing with that. Um, shall we go? Um, where do you want to, oh. the, the bottom line or somewhere around yes. there? Yeah. nice length for that chord some people do it very abruptly and I think it just it just needs time to register that's quite an extraordinary cadence isn't it um, I'm not sure you need the addition um, the extra addition yes. of registration um, throughout that whole section actually I would I would personally keep the registration the same for the whole middle section and just let the music speak so I, I don't think we need additions of um, of, of you know uh, great reads and things at that point um, especially as it's quite low um, and, and as I say, quite potentially quite muddy than yes. the texture. But on this, this um, organ, of course, you have those really sharp uh, sharps. You do, which you, yes. Which I think, if I put it on free, there are quite a lot of really sharp mixtures yeah. which I pull out to it does, compensate yeah. for that. So it, it does work, but as you say, it can yeah. get a little bit muddled. Especially it's also, especially, it's, it's not in the middle, um, because it's all quite contrapuntal. Yes. Um, you know, you might add it, that that's obviously a, a starting point for the top voice, but the that middle voice is being held over at that point. So to add something on a tied note might not be ideal. Well, I did that. Um, I do it here because uh, Dupre on his recording does it there. So I thought it a good idea to add it here because I like the build up, especially mm -hmm. if I just take a little trill on this one, then go up and then it just uh, a little bit rubato of that low pedal D and then As, and up then, and to then, that yeah. with the reeds. I think you can do that just through, through um, your playing rather than necessarily yes. adding adding stops, but yeah, absolutely. Um, just conscious of time, because obviously we don't want to. <laughs> um, should we just quickly go back to the opening section? Oh, yes. Um, so what is your feeling on this? What's, what mood are you trying to convey for this one? Um, well, I think it especially doesn't have to be on like a swell plenum or swell chorus. It has to be on the flutes mm. and uh, the 842 registration in this case, because in a larger acoustic, I think the 842 works better than just the 8 and the 4s. Um, I go for a little bit of a sparkly sound to really have that contrast to just slow down for that last bit. And then that and then pedal coming, Yes. So Which yeah, I really in. like your registration. I think that does work. I think something sparkly, um, it absolutely is great. I think um, maybe if we could bring some of that sparkle into the tempi um, and also the articulation as well. So registration, absolutely, um, that, that's, that's, that's perfect. Um, let's try it just a slight bit faster. And again, just with a bit more intricate um, yes. you know, um, uh, detail in, in, yes. in the hands. Should we just try the opening?
That's good, excellent. So I think just a bit more light and playful. Yes. Absolutely. And what I like about this opening section um, is the sort of, the kind of interplay between the, the different time yeah. signatures. So the way he's written the groupings. Yes. Yeah, so sometimes it comes out in three and sometimes in two. So sometimes it's da 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 And I think you can, you can bring that alive a bit more. So perhaps just enjoy these. So enjoy the fact that the, he's grouped it in three at those points. Um, and, and just make sure when we have these very short notes, da, 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 ba, lum, that we don't lose those. So Yes. Da, da, lum. So just, just yes. make your fingers really, really work hard there. That's the reason why I chose that little bit slower tempo to have those. Yeah, I, I think just um, yes. we can probably do it at a, at a quicker tempo and still get the, still get yeah. the detail, I think. Um, uh, make sure again keep the tempo the same I think for this section um, yeah, I, so I noticed you speeded up yeah, when you got there, there. Um, was that for any particular reason or? no it was just a mistake <laughs> right <laughs> but to then so, slow down again would seem like yeah yeah so so that is that that's the same speed as the opening yeah. da, 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 da. Um, yes and it and it um, I, I like what you did with the, the build up into the, the middle section um, just being a bit more free here and you can see he's, he's put it in, in interesting groupings again. So I yes. think we can just play with those a bit more. And you get this sort of different accents going on with the different, different groupings of the hands. Um, and then leading in. So don't leave us hanging on that F sharp too long. So make sure it's going, it's yes. leading into the next section. Should we just do the final thing we're going to do? <laughs> Should we just do this link from here and then just give us the first note of the next section just so we get the, get the link? Great. I did say the final thing, but um, it's just uh, can, I think we're just losing one or two of these notes. So da, 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 just make sure we go all the way down. Just play that slowly, just that pattern. Yeah. Again, you might it might you be helpful to, to use the two yeah, hands, and I hands. think that's the way. So the ones with the stems going down indicate the left hands, and the ones going up, and and that would also naturally give us the different accents with the different hands as well. Yes. So experiment with that. But yes, just, just make sure we've got all the notes in that in that section. Lovely. Do you have any questions uh, no, uh, for me? No, that was very clear. Quite Excellent. a lot of new insights uh, on this piece. Yeah, lovely. Well, well done. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much, Tim, and well played. Lovely stuff. So we're now going to introduce Nathan uh, Ian, who's uh, 15. I should say Tim was also 15. Um, and Nathan, if you want to make your way up, um, Nathan has done his grade six organ and is currently working towards his grade eight. Is this one of your grade eight pieces? Yes. So, is this, so this, um, this piece, which Nathan will introduce, um, is one of his grade eight pieces. And he has also uh, done grade eight piano. Um, so I'll pass um, Nathan the microphone. Just going to pop it on your shirt, and I'll press that button there. And then, if you want to just introduce your piece very quickly, um, I'll be playing the Toccata and Fugue in F by Buxtehude, uh, Bux WV157, and I've been playing it for just a, under a year. Excellent. Good. Off you go.
kids. Um, so what do we know about Box de Huda? Um, anything, anything interesting? No, not much. <laughs> not much. Um, so uh, Box de Huda was uh, sort of in the generation before Bach um, and was um, the leading uh, North German uh, organist and, and composer, so much so that there's this famous story of, of Bach walking um, something like 300 miles or a very, very long way, um, something inconceivable by today's standards, um, to go and hear him, um, to hear him play. Um, and um, his style in some ways is similar to Bach, but, but there are some crucial differences. Um, what, what do you think, what, what do you think defines his style? Um, or the style of this piece. And does anything catch catch your attention? Uh, I haven't really looked no. much into it. Um, it's it's more that it's it's more sectional. So he um, he plays with one idea and then goes on to another idea. And um, and I think um, he, he so it's it's more there are individual characters to be found in each in each section. Um, and I think um, we can play around with that a, a bit more. So the opening, I thought you did really well, actually. Re really nice uh, first few bars. Um, so a lot of his toccatas um, and, and preludiums, um, preludia, should we say, um, start in this in um, this style um, known as the Stylus Fantasticus. Have you have you heard that? Um, so it's uh, a kind of um, fantastical, you know, rhetorical um, kind of style whereby it's a little bit improvisatory. So you can imagine Box de Huda sitting down at the organ and think, okay, I'm going to play a piece in F major. Um, let's uh, just introduce F major by doing a nice little scale and then, you know, run with a few ideas and then the piece sort of gets going. Um, so these first few bars, I think um, the way you dealt with it was great. So it doesn't have to be absolutely strict time. So just imagine he's, he's improvising these scales. So. You know, so it sort of runs up to that C and then it runs up to the A and then so you've got these little, little phrases. Um, and then the music sort of gets going here, doesn't it? Um, so should we just try that opening and be perhaps even more um, kind of uh, improvisatory. Um, so, so forget forget the fact that they all look like equal semiquavers. Just just go with the shapes and the patterns. That was really nice. I think when the music gets gets to this point, um, it's quite repetitive, isn't it? So we've established F major now, which was sort of the idea of the initial flourishes. Um, so I think maybe just get the momentum going, otherwise it gets a little bit static, doesn't it? Um, so just speed through these. Um, and um, in a group of four, obviously you're at this sort of hierarchy of the beats as you want to stress the first one generally. Um, so just make sure that all these chords aren't coming out the same. So you can perhaps stretch the first one. But then the subsequent beats maybe can be a bit shorter. Um, and going, going back to um, Baroque bowing, which um, I could probably be talking about um, a fair amount. Um, if you think of crotchets, you know, if you if you think of um, a long note on a on a on a on a um, old string instrument, you know, with an old proper a bow, um, a baroque bow, um, the the sound gradually dies away, doesn't it? Um, so da, da, like that. Um, which obviously on an organ, you know, you stick down the key and it will stand, sound exactly the same until you release it. Um, but so sometimes in order just to create that extra light and space in the music, we just need to release the notes a little bit earlier than it might look like on the page. So um, essentially don't, don't feel you have to keep these crotchets for their absolute full length. Okay, so you just try, 
Let's go from where the pedal comes in and just maybe a tiny bit faster and keep, keep the crotchets a little bit lighter, okay? Great, that was, that was re really nice actually, that, that was lovely. At this point where we've just got to in the music, um, it sort of starts again, doesn't it? It does the opening material now in a different key. Um, so I think maybe we can take a bit more time over that rest, so don't be um, as literal about the rhythm there. So finish off this section. <laughs> So take take as much time as you like, and, and then and then go back to your more improvisatory um, style. There, should we just start the page? Perhaps take even more time, you know. Dare to dare to keep your listeners waiting, um, you know. If, um, if if the music becomes too predictable, then people people will, will zone out if they're listening. Um, but if you do something unexpected, then that that will grab their um, attention. Um, I like what you're doing. Those echoes. That's that's really that's that's a, a nice thing you can do um, to kind of vary the the character as um, do those little echo effects. That's really great. Um, Okay, and then in this next section, we've got a lot of um, phrases that start on a, um, on a weak beat. So we start with a quaver rest and then we've got three, three quavers. So just make sure that we don't give a big accent to that first chord when we come in. So we don't want to make it sound like it's on a downbeat. Um, so rather than... So I want you to think one way of doing it is actually think of the quaver rest in your head, so... And aim for the next important beat, which is going to be that one, isn't it? So just again, just keep all these repeated chords quite light. Okay, should we just try... Um, let's go from, yeah, from this point. Excellent. Um, so that that was uh, you dealt with that really well now. So uh, I think, as I say, don't just make sure we don't come in with a big accent. Um, then the the other danger with with this piece in particular, because there are lots of repeated chords, um, especially later on, actually in the fugue, um, we get all this stuff, don't we? And. Um, you are rightly trying to emphasize the first of the group of four. Um, and but the, the way you're doing it is by lengthening it, which is, is a valid way of, of um, making a note sound um, louder and um, more important. Um, what do you think the danger of using that technique is? Uh, it gradually slows down. It, exactly. Bit. It means we have a kind of hiatus at every sort of half bar, don't we? Da, 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 and the music kind of keeps getting stuck. Um, so I wonder if we can achieve a way of lengthening the notes but without um, making the, the rhythm um, you know too skewed. So essentially if you make the ones around it shorter it yeah. will it will still sound longer. So. That kind of thing. Um, should we just try a few of those? Um, do you want to go from here? Um, 
That's the idea. And maybe don't, you don't need to emphasize every first and third beat. Um, you know, maybe some of them just, just keep it going um, because otherwise it, it does, we do all feel a bit seasick, don't we, at times? <laughs> and you have this kind of um, lopsided rhythm going on. Um, it, in that figuration, um, I think sometimes, I don't know whether it was um, a conscious de decision, um, but you were lengthening the upbeat quite a bit, so you're going, um, I think I was trying to like introduce a new voice. I, yes, absolutely. But we need to know which um, which is the most important beat. So yeah. those are still up beats, aren't yeah. they? So so I I, I think um, whilst absolutely drawing attention um, to to them coming in, I think still treat them as an up beat. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, generally, we don't slur over beats in Baroque music unless there's a very good reason. Um, and um, I can't really see one there. <laughs> um, but um, others may disagree. Um, so uh, just uh, going back to the opening section. So um, really enjoy this. This I think this is really great writing here isn't it um, with these lovely suspensions um, you can perhaps bring the dotted notes um, even more alive bum, 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 ba -dum, bum, bum, ba -dum, ba -dum. so just a bit more energy in the dotted notes there um, now have you thought about a different registration for the fugue i know you um, you got rid of a couple of stops didn't you but have you ever experimented with being even more extreme <laughs> No. <laughs> a bit quieter. Um, so I think so again, as talking about Buxter Huda and his different characters in this in his sections. So we've had this grand opening, and I think this fugue is is quite light and 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 sort of buoyant, isn't it? And quite bouncy. So I think a, a much lighter registration, a bit like the start of your uh, Fantasia. Um, so you know, sort of flutes, some nice nice sort of bright flutes would work quite well. Um, and with a, perhaps a slightly uh, different tempo. So um, if we just, uh, for sake of argument, just um, pick some flutes here. Um, um, so just try that and maybe even without a 16 foot in the pedal as well. So sometimes it's quite nice with these lighter textures um, to, to have an eight foot bass in the, in the, in the pedals. Um, with a four foot flute, perhaps maybe eight and four, potentially. Um, should we just try um, try a bit of this on the choir, um, and perhaps just a little bit faster tempo and a bit lighter, bum 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 ba, bum 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 that kind of thing. What do you think of that? Yeah, I think you're, you're allowed to, to not bit. like it. <laughs> I think I was just holding it a bit back because I'm not that not too familiar with it yet. Yes, um, I think it's quite nice, isn't it? It has a yeah. nice dance-like quality to it, and yeah. a lot of the, his fugues are, are quite um, sort of like canzonas. They're just like little little um, you know light tunes, really. Um, so it's harmonically not the most complex fugue, so um, that you know we, it, it doesn't need to be played with a lot of gravitas. Is what I'm saying, really. Um, if you do use an eight-foot um, bass in the pedal, just um, check that the left hand doesn't go below the pedal part, just so that you don't end up with any funny inversions. Um, so you always want the pedal part to be the bass. 
um, but I think we're okay in this piece. I think it, it doesn't cross, but that's that's just something to be aware of um, in general. And then uh, what you can do with this is then build it back up. So um, here is a, a good a good place you can add something there. Da, 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 da. So build it back up at that point and, and potentially here. Um, so you can then build it up to, to end with your kind of plano that you started. That, so it, it sort of comes full circle. <laughs> yeah. um, so have an experiment with that, just, yeah. just a, bit, a bit more sort of uh, light, light texture. Um, and then the very end um, sort of returns to this, the um, fantastical quality of the opening, isn't it? So I think we can be a bit more free with this. Just play around with those, and then quite snappy with these rhythms potentially. Bum, bottom, bottom, bottom. Yeah. Should we just do the end? So if you go back to your original registrations, we'll end uh, with a grand finale. <laughs> should we? Should we lead in maybe from from that bit? With it, with the snappy rhythms there, and it's good. Also, you didn't have the greater pedal on because we need to hear that that F, don't we? That's already in the pedal, so it's good um, not to have that coupled. Um, brilliant. Um, do you have any specific questions or um, anything anything you'd like to? Um, should I be adding add more ornaments in the fugue? I think you can. Yeah, absolutely. So um, some composers write loads of ornaments and, and write is precisely what they want and others uh, left it a bit more up to the, the perf performer and Buxahudra is usually a little bit light on the ornamentation front. Um, some, in some of his pieces you know it um, you get passages where it's essentially just a kind of outline of some chords and if you play it literally it sounds a bit boring <laughs> so it's you you might want to sort of embellish them you know absolutely so certainly this um this bit of the fugue dun, dun, ba, 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 so. and you don't have to do it the same every time you know but that that sort of a cadence is that's a yeah. that's a particular point that you can you can do absolutely um yes yeah, so feel feel free to embellish it more sure. um you know one there bum, ba, da, ba, ba, okay. potentially um, I think we don't need one on the final note because this okay, is yeah. essentially <laughs> written yeah. actual, isn't it? Um, but yeah, absolutely. Um, feel free to be as flamboyant as you like with Boxy Huda. Um, I, I think he must have been quite an interesting guy, I think, to write you know, music like this and for you know, people like Bach to, to um, look up to him so much. Um, so uh, yeah, just, just um, be as free as, as you like in interpreting the music. Excellent, thank you so much. Well thank done. You. Thank you very much, uh, Nathan. And well played. Um, I love the idea. I love to imagine that when uh, Bach uh, made his famous trip um, to Lübeck to hear Buxtehude play, I love the idea that it was the uh, Passacaglia in D minor mm. that Buxtehude played. Um, because soon after that trip appeared Bach, so in Passacaglia in C minor, yes. which actually is uh, quite similar. A nice thought. Anyway, so moving on to our next um, participant tonight is uh, Noah Davis, who is also 15. Um, so as Noah makes his way up to the organ, I will very quickly introduce him as a school chapel organist and plays Holy Communion every month at his local church in Suffolk. He would like to be a resident organist and an orchestral conductor. He plays piano and trombone and enjoys composition and music history. I will hand over to Noah with the microphone so Noah can introduce the piece himself. Uh, 
Um, this is the Brun's Preludium in G minor. Um, not the fugue, despite how much my teacher loves it. Um, I've been learning it for six months now um, for my organ grade six exam. Thank you very much. So this is a great piece to follow on from the Buxtehude because there are um, uh, lots of similarities. Um, Bruns was actually a pupil of, of Buxtehude, so um, uh, it's not surprising that um, that he he um, used uh, many of the the same uh, stylistic uh, features. Um, do, do we know any anything about Bruns? Um, anything at all? He lived incredibly shortly. Mm, he um, did. So there isn't as much music from him as one would have liked. Yeah, absolutely. So he sadly died when he was 31, hmm. uh, I believe. And um, there's only um, five organ pieces um, that well, we know of, that there, there may have been others, um, but um, they're all brilliant. Um, so, um, you know, he was one of these composers that maybe uh, didn't commit much to paper, but what he did, you know, uh, was, was all absolutely worth it. Um, he was a famous violinist as well, so as well as being an organist, he, he uh, was, a, was a great violinist. And you can actually sort of, the, the opening figuration of this, you can imagine being on the violin with the string crossing, and it's, it's, quite, um, um, it's quite, quite similar in that way yeah. um, to string writing. Uh, he apparently used to occasionally play the violin and accompany himself with the organ pedals, um, which um, I tried to do once, and it's much harder than, than, it, uh, than it seems. Um, but that's that's uh, a good good party trick uh, for for anyone out there. Um, okay, good. Um, so uh, again, I think so. This starts in a similar way to the to the um, Buxtehude piece we were just um, talking about. So I think we can be quite um, uh, free with the with the opening. Um, we've got this little descending theme, haven't we? With a da 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 da. So it's quite nice if you slightly lengthen those notes so we hear that coming out. 
Right. Um, so so we, we can hear that sort of secondary melody, that compound melody coming, coming uh, through there. Um, and then um, for these two chords here, which would you say is the m most important? Um, the, the second one. As in the, the, so the G minor cadence, one. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So again, if we just get shorten the, the one before. So we have a weak, strong. Um, yeah. So just um, play that almost like a quaver, actually. Um, uh, just, just make sure there's a bit of gap between the two chords. Okay, should we just do that, the opening? in the registration out a little bit. Yeah. Um, so often in these this, um, contrapuntal um, things that where there's lots of you know, interesting uh, parts going on, um, if you have too much of a heavy registration, you just it obscures a lot of the detail. Um, so maybe something like a, a plano. Um, yeah. So maybe if we get rid of the, the, the reed. Um, sometimes uh, reeds are quite slow to speak, so they don't often fare well in, in a lot of semi-quaver passages. Um, and, and perhaps the flute as well. So I would, um, in, in, if you want to keep the textures quite clean, maybe just keep to the sort of principal sounds. Don't, don't mix in the flutes as well, because um, it might just sort of muddy the waters a bit. Um, so you want to keep it quite, um, you know, quite clinical. Um, so build it up, um, you know, up to your mixture there, um, and potentially we might just get rid of one of these reeds, maybe that. Um, yeah, that could work. Have you got the manuals coupled? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So again, we might not need all the manuals being coupled. Um, uh, so maybe if we get rid of this, what have we got? Yeah, I think if we have something along those lines um yeah try that see see if you play a little bit of this passage then we'll just hear the balance I think I think that that works nicer than this is a little little bit um, less heavy, <laughs> and then we can hear more detail, yeah. um, which is uh, there's no point us all working hard to play all the notes if then if then people can't hear them. <laughs> uh, so so make sure you're playing on a on a registration where where that's that's possible. Um, lovely. Um, with these pedal um, scales, I notice you're, you're doing the technique of holding onto the organ um, yes. on the sides of the organ, um, which I know is, is um, something that some people teach. Um, and um, the reason they do teach that, that is, is um, it's preferable to holding onto the organ bench because the, the danger with holding onto the organ bench is that you tense up your shoulders and, and hunch your back and, and your posture goes a little bit awry. Um, whereas um, the idea is if you're if you're doing that you you've got a good posture the danger is um you suddenly get to this point and and then realize your hands are a yeah. long way from where they need to be <laughs> so if you're going to do that um just get get your hands in position a little bit earlier so we don't have a last minute panic on that semi quaver rest <laughs> um but have you have you tried it without without um, that? yeah yeah, and how how does it feel? Um, it feels just as comfortable. Yeah, I think it's just the muscle memory of going it, to it, that because that. that's how you've yeah. learned exactly. Because um, I think sometimes you know um, we don't have an extensive um, pedal section where you know yeah. um, if you're going to be doing that for a whole page, if it's the the beginning of the uh, front finale <laughs> uh, or something where you've got a pedal solo for for two two and a half pages, um, that's okay. But um, I think something which is well, there's quite fast um, interchanges. I think um, you want to be keeping your hands kind of um, relatively close to the keys, um, just just for 
to make it easier, easier yeah. on yourself. Um, okay, good. Um, so this is all fine. Shall we go? Um, let's go from this first pedal solo then, and let's try it without without the um, hoarding on there, if you can. <laughs> In this section here, where you've, you've got uh, the pedal sort of answering the hands, yeah. you? just make sure they don't overlap. So there was a danger that the pedal came in a bit early there. So just make sure we finish this off before that, and, and then vice versa. So hear that pedal note before we launch off. And if it's not in absolute strict time, that's fine, because yeah. again, it's still in this, um, this sort of um, improvisatory feel, isn't it? Um, so. So here, let's hear that dialogue between, between those two parts. Um, and then again, every time we have this rhythm, bum, 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 if we keep them yeah. short, long, short, long, um, that would be great. Um, and then um, same with, with these can perhaps be a bit lighter as well. So it's not too legato. Bum, 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 bum. So just, just keep those quavers, quavers quite light. Should we try, let's go from the end of that. Um, so we just hear the dialogue between the parts. Quite an unusual cadence, isn't it? Yeah. Um, just being an imperfect cadence. So maybe have a bit of a slowdown. Okay. Um, so it doesn't feel so abrupt, just, just stopping there. Yeah. Um, and if we can just make sure when, when we're in, um, in parallels with the, the sixths in the, in the hands, just make sure that our ensemble is absolutely precise. So, so that. Um, yeah, sometimes not quite um, together. Um, but as I say, just, just manage that cadence a bit more to so slow down, and then that will prepare for this new section that's coming, which is a little bit different. Um, so, um, and potentially put a trill on that note. Um, again, with this piece, um, feel free to, to trill. Um, again, at this sort of similar, the similar places, um, you know, these dotted rhythms or cadences. Um, and, and this section, which is quite repetitive, yeah. um, so you might want to put a few ornaments in just to, to vary it a little bit. Um, but let's do, should we go from here? Let's just deal with that cadence. Don't, yeah, if you, if, uh, don't put it in after the yeah. other. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 da. Put a nice uh, long, um, maybe lean on the G, 
Um, yeah. You know, just say. But that was that was good. The way you you slowed down was was brilliant. Should we maybe go on the bottom line? Lovely. So this final section, yeah, it's a little bit more, um, it, it, it's a bit more introspective, isn't it? It's like, um, and, and we get this really poignant A flat um, with the Neapolitan um, yeah. and the G minor. Um, I wonder if um, we don't hold that chord so long. So keep it relative um, to, to the rhythms relative to, to what they look like yeah. um, so um even if you do stretch that suspension so I, I know yeah. what you're getting at because um, it's such a lovely chord is it all these seventh suspensions but um, just hold it for an uh, elongated quaver rather than something that sounds like a crotchet or a dotty crotchet right um, and you could maybe change registration for that section as well. Maybe a bit something a bit quieter. Right. If you were going on, it depends. If you were, if if you're completing the piece there, then um, yeah. maybe keep it as it is for the the whole thing. Um, so it would be odd to end it quietly if um, you know if you're if you're stopping at that point. If you were going on into the fugue, yeah. that because it's sort of it's a bit of a link passage into the fugue really. So um, it could be. On, on a sort of quieter, um, st more string-like sort of um, registration, um, to more expressive. Um, and that's something that um, both um, Bruns and Brooks de Huda were um, uh, very much inspired by the Italian um, style of people like Frescobaldi, um, mm. as a, um, where they have lots of uh, suspensions and, and release. And, and so th this style um, directly comes from, from that. Um, so, it, yeah, it, it could be could be a bit more solemn, so a bit quieter if you were going to go on. Yeah. Um, yeah, lovely. Should we just just this ending and just uh, say maybe whilst lengthening it, just keep it relative the the rhythms relative. Okay. Have you got thank any questions for us or? Um, no, no thank you very much. Great, thank you so much. Well done, uh, thank you very much. Noah, and I look forward to him maybe hearing the, the whole thing um, in the future. So let's move on to Jake. Jake is our eldest organist, apart from us two old fogies. <laughs> um, Jake is actually 17, so really, really old. Um, so Jake says that he hasn't taken any organ exams yet, uh, but is working towards grade eight. So straight up the top. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Um, Jake has, however, completed his grade eight piano. Um, so that's something at least. And is now um, roughly work working working towards the uh, ABRSM piano diploma. So, Jake, do you want to hop on? And I will allow 
um, you to introduce your piece and perhaps why you're playing this piece as well. Um, so I'm playing the first movement from Bach's first trio sonata in E flat, uh, BWV 525, and um, I learnt it for the upcoming organ trial auditions. So yeah. good luck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's hear it. Well done. Do you play any of the other trio movements? Uh, no, this is the first one. The first one, yeah. yeah. Um, don't let it be your last. No. <laughs> and a word to all of you that trio sonatas are not just for um, for organ exams and, and um, organ trials. They are they are pieces for life. Um, they are absolutely um, just the musical gems. Um, so um, you know, go and go and learn a lot of them. Yeah. Um, you know, not all at once. <laughs> um, <laughs> but there are there are six of them in total. 
um, and uh, they're all equally brilliant, um, each with three movements. Um, it's thought that um, some of them may have originated um, as instrumental sonatas, um, so um, they may be transcriptions of uh, works that he'd done for, for instruments. Um, and um, he may have also written them as, as technical studies, because um, they are obviously technically demanding um, the fact that there are three independent parts, so um, you know, equally important. Um, and uh, so he may have written them uh, for his sons, uh, potentially, um, as, as, as learning tools and the art of organ playing. Um, lucky them. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're, they're all absolutely fabulous. Um, I thought there was really, really nice playing there. Um, firstly, I thought your tempo was, was really nice, actually. It had lots of elegance um, without being hurried. Um, and you kept it um, quite... Um, it was it was the same tempo throughout, so it didn't waver, um, which there is a danger in this piece that it can, you know, the semiquavers can run away with themselves, <laughs> um, whereas you, you had great control um, over it. So so that was that was really good. Um, and um, we've been talking about upbeats a lot, and there are lots of them in this piece. So all of this figuration. That happens happens a lot throughout the piece, and um, you you nicely articulated those um, and consistently as well. So um, so well done on that. Um, let's talk about registration. So um, when you're picking a registration for a, a trio sonata, um, what things are you considering? Um, balance. Balance. Yes. Being able to hear all. Absolutely. So we want the parts to be balanced. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean they have to be the same sound. Um, they can be. Um, if you think of, you know, Bach wrote a, a fantastic double violin concerto, and obviously the two violins sound quite similar. Um, so it is possible to have two um, uh, sounds, you know, which are the same. I, I personally think it, it's um, it's it's better if you have slightly contrasting sounds so they've got a, a, a quality of their own but balanced um, definitely in terms of um, the dynamic obviously so you don't want one hand to be louder than the other um, but also the, the register so I noticed that you've got in your left hand you've got up to a two foot haven't you mm -hmm. whereas in the right hand you've only got up to a four foot so that means occasionally that your left hand is sounding a bit higher than the right hand, and um, uh, maybe that does just confuses things a little bit in the textures. So, if you are to um, have one one of them with a with a higher register than the other, I would potentially have that in the right hand. Um, so, a, you know, eight four two in the right hand and an eight uh, eight and four in the left hand, um, just so we keep them in their relative positions. So we, we don't want, um, as I say, the, the left hand sort of coming out higher. Um, and have you ever tried playing the left hand down an octave? Have you ever tried that? Um, so this is um, obviously with the um, trio sonatas, with the, the left hand and the right hand often being in a similar um, tessitura, um, you, you often find you know, your hands are crossing, crossing over. Um, sometimes what's a little bit more comfortable is, is to actually play the left hand down an octave with a four foot stop or four and two, which would be the equivalent of a eight and four, obviously, but down the octave. Um, and it just gives you a bit more freedom as a, as a performer, actually. It means you don't get tied up in so many knots. Um, another advantage of that is that um, often, it depends on the organ that you're playing it on, but um, if you're playing on a sort of romantic, a sort of English romantic organ, um, something like a eight foot open diapason can be quite heavy and slow to speak and you don't necessarily want that as, as your as your kind of basis for a for you know a light trio whereas a four foot principle um, might be a bit more direct and a, a little bit thinner um, and that might be good down the octave um, so I won't make you do it now um, but <laughs> but have a little experiment um, with with playing um, so you would play your left hand down there to start with Okay. Uh, at the beginning, but I say oh, I won't make you do it now, but because um, yeah. it will feel a bit funny. And <laughs> um, the other thing is make sure that you practice it both ways, both ways round with one your right hand's higher or your 
left hands higher. Um, so many people have their set ways that I always play my trio this way. But then um, uh, the nature of being organists is we go to different organs um, and um, your preferred registration may be, may be the other way around. Um, and if you've always played it a certain way, you might feel um, it's harder to adapt. Um, so to so make sure you practice it um, in a variety of different formations. <laughs> okay, um, and musically, so I, th I think uh, lots of really good things actually. Um, make sure that our crotchets at the ends of phrases are consistent, uh, a consistent length. Um, sometimes they were quite short. Um, So just finish it off nicely. Well, should we go back to your original registration? Sorry, I messed it up. <laughs> there we go. Um, but so a, a nice, a nice lengthy crotchet there. Um, yes, just back on the registration front. Again, I would err on the side of not mixing flutes and principles too much. Um, if you can keep, you know, to it, so eight four flutes or Eightful principles. Um, it's just a little bit um, has a bit more clarity that way. Um, but I can see I can see why you've done it. But and because we don't want a very slow, a big flute. You don't want a sort of harmonic flute. You do. That one's not too bad. But um, you want to keep them. It may be that some of these. It's quite nice. Um, so experiment around with those, but. Um, try to avoid mixing and matching in the same um, hand um, um, principles and, and flutes if you can. Um, and you don't you want the pedal to be um, uh, direct in speaking. So often it's it's got quite intricate um, uh, music, hasn't it? Ba -ba -ba -bum, ba -ba -ba -bum. So you you want something with clarity. So I like your your eight foot um, principle you've got on the pedals. That's quite nice. Um, if you had like a uh, violin cello or something you know just um, as long as it wasn't too slow to speak um, that could also work a sort of string you may be um, we're not blessed with loads of 16 foots on this organ um, in the foundation department we've got various reeds <laughs> we don't want those um, so um, yeah we don't have much choice but you don't want a very a kind of very wafty uh, 16 foot that's gonna bulk down the texture at the bottom you want a you want something with clarity. Um, okay, so um, yes, yeah, so I say musically, lots of great stuff. Um, so keep those crotchets consistent length. Um, now, tied notes in in bark, um, we have to. Um, so looking at, at this these kind of sections, um, you have to see um, what the note is tied to and what the harmony is at the point of of the tie as to whether it's worth releasing the note on the tie or to hold it through. Um, so in this section, we end up with some uh, nice um, harmonies, don't we? Some nice suspensions on the tied note. So definitely hold those ties through to, that, to, the, to keep that note for its full duration, which you were doing, uh, which was great. But in other cases, um, if, if we didn't have a suspension there, you could feel free to release the tied notes um, just to put a bit more, um, yeah, you know, a bit of um, like a breath, really. Um, often we don't talk about breathing very much as organists because you know we don't have to do it, but the organ does. If you think of the organ as a as a wind instrument, um, being powered by wind, um, it needs a break from time to time, um, or our ears do as listeners um, listening to the organ. Uh, so um, if if in a continual passage of music. If there's not many rests around, so once the right hand gets started, there's sort of keeps going to there, doesn't it? But you might want to put the odd bit of phrasing in, um, just to um, you know give give it a little break from time to time. Um, good. Shall we go? Uh, let's cover. Is there a particular place you want to cover? Or um, should we cover this section? Yeah. Yeah. It's where it gets a little bit yeah. complicated, isn't it? Um, do you want to go? Where do you want to pick it up from? Uh, start with Somewhere at the top. Yeah, that'd yeah. be great. So if you, if you do it on your original registration, then.
yeah. that was a crotchet in in mm. point where um, mm -hmm. that one was perhaps a little short. Yeah. So you make sure that finishes off. Da -da 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 -dum, da -da -da -dum. Okay. It doesn't have to be absolutely full length, but maybe a bit bit longer than you than you did there. Yeah. Um, good. Um, and I liked that you um, sort of slightly place the cadence um, around there. Um, and that's something that we um, often tend not to think about in Baroque music is because um, we tend to think uh, rubato and, you know, pulling the tempo around is a, is a very sort of romantic thing to do. Um, and and uh, mostly it is. Um, but it is OK to, um, you know, in Baroque music, just on a more localised level. So just at a cadence, just to just give it a bit of space, um, you know, without doing a massive ral, um, you know, and um, it also just just sort of um, breaks the music up into into more sections so it just just helps us digest what's going on um, if you've you know arrived in a new in a new key and I think okay uh, let's mark the fact we've we've arrived at F minor now um, so just give it a bit of time there bum, 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 bum. and off we go again bum, bum, bum. so just make sure you pick it up that the tempo um, you know soon afterwards um, so maybe just this little corner, um, just do a little bit of slow practice on that on that section, just to um, make sure we've got our heads round. Um, what's a really good way of practicing trio sonatas? Actually, I find is um, it doing it with um, no stops on one of the manuals. Um, so because obviously when you know we all practice things separate hands and you know right hand pedal, left hand pedal, um, and that's all great. But the um, the hard thing is actually putting it together. Um, but when we put it together, we're not necessarily hearing all the parts because there's a lot going on. So if we want to focus on what our left hand is doing while still having the challenge of playing it with the right hand, um, then get rid of the right hand stops but still play it. So then you're hearing the left, what your left hand's doing um, whilst, whilst still, um, you know, playing it all. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's, that's a good thing. Um, to do and it just just focuses um you know your ears on, on one particular part as well um so yeah just just have a go at that corner um slowly in your you know in your own time yeah. um yes uh that's all great should we just do the ending so we just get a yeah. nice finish um where do you want to go from here yeah. Bum, bum, yeah. Bum. so we get the tune and the pedals Maybe even stretch the appoggiatura a bit longer. Yeah. Ta -ta, really eke that one out. Um, uh, yeah, brilliant. Good. Have you got any questions for us? Um, in terms of just using, like, with the pedals, using a 16. Mm -hmm. and a, like, there's there's one bar that the parts cross. Yes, so I think generally um, in the trio sonatas, I think 16 foots work in the sort of outer movements, which are generally the more sort of lively movements. Um, then the, the inner movements of the trios, which are uh, usually a bit quieter, a bit more introspective, often work quite well within just an eight foot pedal. So I, I would keep, I would have the 16 on okay. in the pedals, yeah. Uh, but definitely with an eight as well. So ne never just play 16 on its own, obviously you need to, um, you need a 16 and an 8, um, which which you've got. Um, yeah, brilliant. Okay. Good. Thank you so much. Thank well you. done and good luck with your trials. Those pieces are terrifying to play, <laughs> particularly live on Beauty and Sound. So well done for doing that. Um, I, I recorded all six of them, but I, I don't, I, I've only played, I think, a couple of them live. And I just, I dare not do it. Cause, but well done for you. You're obviously braver than me.
So Yiming is up next. Uh, Yiming is 16 and is the organ scholar at uh, Beckenham pa uh, Baptist Church in London and an organ student at uh, St. Olav's Grammar School. Um, Yiming recently passed his grade six after playing the organ for 10 months. It's pretty good going. And is now work, uh, work, I've done it again, working towards his grade eight. So we'll allow um, Yiming to introduce this piece, which brings us out of the Baroque period and somewhat a little, little more into the modern time. It seems that the, the way to go is not to do grade seven. Yeah. <laughs> Poor grade seven. There's some yeah. lovely pieces on grade seven. Yeah. Said. So, <laughs> so I'll be playing Nun Danke Alla Gott, uh, translated as Now Thank for Your God by Siegfried Kargelert. Um, as soon as I finished my grade six, I set myself a challenge to learn this piece because it was one of the most exciting pieces in the grade eight syllabus. Yeah, so I'll be playing Nun Danke Alla Gott.
Well done. So how long have you been, been playing this piece? Uh, not even a month yet, I'd say no? two or three weeks. Very good, right, right. Mm -hmm. fast learner. Um, great, great stuff. So we were talking about um, earlier about some composers not writing in much detail. Uh, Carl Geller is the absolute uh, opposite. Um, so he's annotated every single note to the nth degree. Um, uh, there are every single variety of accents and staccatos um, that, that you've ever, ever come across. Um, and it's our challenge to, to try and work out, one, what they all mean, and how are we going to interpret them all differently. Um, so um, if we look at the very beginning, so we've got these accents here, but then we've got sort of tenutos on those ones. Um, and then later on, we've got these uh, little hat accents, haven't we, or little hat staccatos, um, which must have a proper name, um, but uh, <laughs> I, I call them, call them hats because they look like that. So we have to decide uh, what we're going to do with, with each one. Um, so I wonder if we can get a difference between those accents at the beginning um, and those tenutos. So just give a bit more weight to those so that they can have a lot of attack. Da, bum, bum, and then... Da, 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 da. So just be a bit more weighty with those ones. Mm -hmm. Should we just just try yeah. the beginning? is marked so it's got a big slur but then it individually the notes have got little tenutos on haven't they yeah. um, so perhaps you can be a bit separate with those ones in the pedals mm -hmm. so um, as the harmonies sort of change a bit more so at the beginning we've got you know essentially a bar of G major bar of G major whereas it gets a bit more chromatic around here and the harmonies are changing even at the quaver level so there's a lot going on um, so I think just being a little bit less legato with the with the articulation there will just help the clarity um, just yeah. just um, should we just try the the gravamente yeah Um, when we've got these, um, it's great to bring out these sort of crossbeat accents. Da -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Just make sure we don't snatch that chord too much. It is staccato, but obviously um, we need all the all the notes to sound, you know. So so we don't want it to be, you know, you know, don't yeah. don't be too snatched on those. Um, no. Yeah. Um, that's good. Definitely, okay. It definitely has to be a bit shorter because of because of the reverb. Absolutely. Like yes. Oh, yes. Short. Absolutely. Shorter than than these ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is. It is right. That it is all relative. Um, just as I say, not too not too snatched. Because um, yeah. again, so they're all quite dense harmonies, and we we need to kind of hear what's going on. Um, then we've got a few moments in this piece where we've got to navigate changing manuals, haven't we? Yeah. Um, um, at the moment, the, the way you're doing it is sort of coming to a stop on that third beat and then having a bit of time. Um, I wonder if we can build in um, the time that we need for that manual change into, if, if you start preparing that in the way of um, sort of slowing down, so a bit of rubato, yeah. um, that means we don't have to then make the third beat too long um, because we've already allowed for slowing down. So one, two, three, four, one. So yeah. rather than one, two, three, pause, four, one. Do you see if you go yeah. one, two, three, four, one. It's just a little bit more organic that way. So um, rather than a bit more, uh, less, less stop start. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Should we just try again if you go same place? We'll do yeah. that link. I think I think 
still sit on the third beat a bit, so that was perhaps a little bit too short. Yeah. <laughs> but um, ba 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 so it's you know it's still almost a full length crotchet. Um, it just means we don't delay the fourth beat um, too much. Yeah. Yeah. So just go straight straight on that bar. Excellent. Um, lovely. Da, da, da. You're playing these two notes staccato at the minute, aren't they? Um, so they're still slurred. Yeah. Um, so I think you should keep the detail with the slurring there. Um, then if we can employ the same kind of idea here going into these, um, the, the various flourishes in this piece. Um, so I think maybe don't sit on the chord before the flourish too long. Um, build it into your um, rubato. Da, 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 so it, yeah. it's again, it sounds like there are four beats in that bar. So it's just keeping Not, the momentum going. Sure. Yes, yeah. although we can slow down, absolutely. Um, it just feels, as I say, it's, it's keep making sure that there are there are four beats in a bar and not suddenly, um, you know, six or seven. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, yeah. Um, so maybe should we just try, maybe from that point? Fine, yes. Um, I mean, we, we don't need to start the beat for early, um, you know. Da, 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 da. Ba, da, la, 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 la. No, but that was that was that was good in in, in keeping it to four beats in the bar. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, um, so we get to play this this section twice because it's we do the whole whole bit as a dark capo. Um, do you um, think of this bit any differently the final time, or um, are you? Um, doing it sort of the same. Uh, I think maybe a bit slower because it's during the end. Exactly, but. yeah. So I think, because we hear this tune quite a lot. You know, um, so when we get the very final time at the end, uh, maybe we can have a bit more of a grand, um, you know, um, a sense of finality about it. Um, so maybe a bit of a slow up. Um, so, so maybe the first time you do this, you might just, um, you know, motor on through. Um, with the momentum, but then maybe on the repeat you, you might slow up and then perhaps do this a little bit um, menu mosso, you know, to make it a bit a bit grander. Yeah. Um, should we should we do this run as if it's for the for the final time? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Done, yes. Um, I'd be inclined to even do a bit more, a bit more slow up. So, yeah. And then maybe yeah. even slower. That's a really weighty, you know, really, really final at that time. Um, and in all these runs, if you can, yeah, just, just make sure that there's as much clarity as, as, as you can. Um, um, don't necessarily interpret these, these markings as being um, a slur in the sense of it all being, you know, completely legato. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's just obviously just um, you know marking marking the shape of the phrase. Um, but you know you may need a bit of articulation just to get that kind of thing rather than you know. So you don't want it all to blur into into one. Yeah. Let's uh, just make sure the fingers are beavering away. <laughs> um, uh, okay. The next page is just this. One. Yeah, you've got that on there. Yes. So. Um, between these two sections, um, so we've got a pause there, but we've got a pause on the rest, and I think really listen to the acoustic in that in that um, that rest. So maybe take a little bit more time for that that uh, chord to clear, um, you know, before we come in with the E minor. Um, 
so so just just uh, keep us waiting a little bit there. Do you have to wait for it to fully uh, delay? Uh, decay Not necessarily or? fully. If you know if you were playing in St Paul's Cathedral or something, that might <laughs> be be a while. Um, but uh, you know, just enough that that um, you know it isn't going to conflict too much. Yeah. Um, so so just just give yourself a little little more time there. Um, and then I wouldn't do this, this section any slower, actually. Um, you were perhaps a bit meno mosso, weren't you? Mm -hmm. um, either consciously or <laughs> unconsciously. <laughs> um, but I, I would personally keep, so it's still got that march quality, hasn't it? So, so just, just keep, keep that ticking along at the same tempo. Um, and then, um, this, this was all good. Um, yeah, excellent. And then that's the same going back to there. So, so maybe don't sit on that third beat too long. Bum, bum, bum. -da 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 -da. So just maybe do a bit more slow up to, to lead into it so that so we don't just suddenly come to a stop. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, good. So should we just do that link? Want to go from here? Da, 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 da. Uh, yeah, okay. Maybe slow it down a bit in advance of that, so it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be strict time. So, bum, 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 da -la 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 -la. yeah. Yeah. So it's a, a bit of a bit of a pull up. Um, so we've had this long, uh, you know, dominant pedal here, so it's leading to something. Um, and uh, don't be too short with these top notes. I know that again they're staccatos, but um, we just need to hear them. Just to give them a bit bit of weight. Same with these accents here. So note these are accents rather than staccatos. Dun, 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 dun. So be quite heavy with those chords. Yeah. Um, uh, some interesting harmonies there, aren't there? You know, so just just make sure that we're not we're not losing any of them. Um, let's just try that link one more time. So if we go from here, yeah, so we get the nice heavy accents. Was that that was better? So you can perhaps afford a bit more time, but that's 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 the the idea there. Mm -hmm. um, excellent. So Carl Gellert wrote a lot of music for harmonium. Uh, he was one of the the main uh, harmonium composers, um, and it's thought that some of these um, uh, sixty six uh, hymn um, uh, uh, chorale um, improvisations uh, originally started started life on on the harmonium. Uh, perhaps not this one. I can't imagine this one sounding sounding that great on a harmonium, but um, certainly uh, suits suits a grand organ like this one. Um, lovely. Do you have any questions? Uh, yeah, about it's, the piece? it's just yeah. on this very last bit here. Yeah, right on the third page. Um, there's a D here, but I usually tend to skip it out, and I hear some people usually play a, a C sharp after it after the C natural. Uh, what would you suggest? Uh, on so some people, I, I see, to match yeah. that one. Yeah, so so yeah. it matches the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it might be worth comparing it with other editions. This is the same edition that I've got. You know, see if there's any any variety. Um, there could be an argument for a C sharp, as I say, because it matches matches that that grouping. Um, I personally play a D, and I do repeat it. Um, 
and I, I, I give myself time so that we, to, to hear the repeat, repetition. Um, yeah. So I, I wouldn't miss it out. Um, so I'd either play the D or play a C sharp if you, if you feel that's your preference. Um, but um, we, we do need the correct number of notes there. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, I think I think playing the, the D the D works. Have you have you looked for where the tune is in this? Uh, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, so here, it's marked here, with it. Yeah. <laughs> da, 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 da. It sort of gets a bit lost after that, doesn't it? Yeah, but it's that. it's very <laughs> obvious at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's always fun to so if you're playing a chorale prelude to actually sort of spot where the chorale is. Um, great. Well done. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. Well done. That piece, um, for me, so uh, for any, anyone who has a YouTube channel, um, crossing 100,000 subscribers is a major, major milestone. And um, I was playing that piece live online when I crossed 100,000. So that I'll always associate that piece with getting 100,000 subscribers. Like, and playing it when you when crossing over was the most extraordinary thing. I like, completely lost the plot. <laughs> it may or may not still be online for you to laugh at. <laughs> anyway, so let's go on to our final um, um, the participant tonight. Final, but by absolutely no means um, least. I should say Archie um, had the journey from H E W -L, L yesterday with his mum uh, coming down from Harrogate. Um, I think it took, what, 12, 13, 14, 14, 14 hours, gosh. Um, so they, they did very well to get here and um, I'm sorry, sorry it took you so long. So Archie um, is uh, from Ripon in uh, North Yorkshire uh, and sings, sings, so he's 15 and he sings bass in the choir as a choral scholar in Ripon Cathedral. Uh, as well as playing the organ for the occasional midweek even song under the watchful eye of his teacher, Tim Harper. Uh, Archie hopes to go on to study music at university uh, and then become a cathedral organist, uh, as well as a volunteer for the RNLI. So I will hand over to Archie to introduce the piece and over to you. Thank you. Um, I'm playing the Toccata from Suite Gothique. Um, Suite Gothique is a form is made up of four movements, and the Toccata is the last one. It's in C minor, and it's got a tierce de Piketty on full organ at the end, which is quite fun to play. <laughs> and who's it by? Uh, it is by Bewellerman. Yeah.
Barrett, isn't it? <laughs> organ. Yes, you should say this is the organ from Rotterdam, uh, the Marcus and uh, organ uh, from Rotterdam, and uh, yes, it packs packs a bit of a punch with the uh, with the the uh, sort of fanfare reads there. Um, excellent. How long have you been playing this piece? A month or two. A month or two. Excellent. Do you play the rest of the suite? I've learnt the first and the third movement as well, but not the second one. Yeah, yet. Um, it's a lovely, lovely suite actually, and lots of um, you know variety in the movements. Um, actually, this is the only movement of the of the suite I don't play. So I, I learnt the rest of them um, when I was about your age, and um, I couldn't get my ha head around the figurations uh, in this one, and I was wanting to play all the notes in the wrong order, so I, I gave up. Um, but so maybe maybe one day I'll I'll, I'll revisit it and and, uh, and give it and give it another go. Um, I'm sure this is a, a very um, well known tune to you know people that have been on any sort of haunted horror ride or you know um, watch any any uh, spooky TV series. That is uh, it's it's quite quite a famous famous piece um, and uh, yeah um, yeah very very well played. Um, I think the danger, when people see the word Takata, um, they interpret Takata as meaning, I'm going to play this piece as fast as I can. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that. Um, obviously, it, you know, they're founded on having you know, very rapid figurations. Um, but I think sometimes if we just take the tempo down a notch and we actually hear all the notes, it's much more effective. Um, it's really gritty if we can hear, you know, um, you know exactly what's going on, uh, rather than it all being a, an absolute blur. Um, so um, I thought the tempo at the beginning was perhaps a little bit ambitious, and then we actually got faster. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> uh, so um, um, and the other thing to note is just just um, whenever you have a, a metronome mark, um, just take those uh, with a bit of a pinch of salt because. Um, firstly, they may not actually be the, the composers. Um, a lot of metronome marks and things like that were added on by editors um, and um, may not necessarily match the composer's intentions. Or that they, they just sort of put them on and didn't really think, um, you know, they might have just been in, in, a, in a dry space in their um, composition studio and thinking, oh, yeah, this, this can go this fast. But actually, when you put it in a, in a vast Gothic um, acoustic, um, you know, it's not necessarily going to work at the, the tempo they've said. Um, so um, just play to your instincts rather than necessarily what it says. Um, so let's just do the beginning and just, as I say, just a, a fraction slower, but with absolute clarity with all the detail um, and no rushing. So keep the tempo really gritty and, um, you know, Excellent. To my mind, that was that was much more exciting because I could hear all the detail what was you know going on in it. Um, I didn't uh, kind of feel like you were going to lose control at any any particular moment. Um, and the the advantage of playing at that speed actually is you can hear you can have lots of energy in the dotted note in the theme. So dum ba bum ba bum. You know, whereas if it's all a rush, that that rhythm gets a little bit more like a triplet. You know. You know, dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. So lots of energy in that in that dot. Um, so yeah, well done. Um, now this section we've got to now. Um, so we've got this syncopated um, theme, haven't we, in the right hand? Um, sometimes um, on the first playthrough, it was sounding a little bit like it was on the beat, so it was coming in a bit early. So just make sure. Um, I would personally sort of feel the accents in the in the or the bottom notes of the left hand. So really keep the rhythm, you know. So really feel those strong beats there and then your right hand can play off that. Mm -hmm. 
Um, should we just try, try a bit of that? It, it sort of felt it started well and then it sort of felt like it slowed down a bit so bum, 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 bum. so just make sure that as I say you're feeling the beats and then you're kind of um, reacting to them possibly a bit quicker with perhaps a bit slow to move to the next note um, do you ever practice with a metronome yes yeah um, this is perhaps a good piece to practice with a metronome actually I'm not always a huge fan of practicing me metronomes because they are um, as you know, just unrelenting. <laughs> um, and actually, um, not a lot of music uh, calls for absolute, uh, you know, metronomic playing in, in that sense. Um, although it's good that we can do it, you know, but um, uh, it, this is a section where that, that might, be, might be useful so you, you get the sense of the, of the beats. Um, so if we play on that idea, um, and then this corner here, um, perhaps can just have a bit more time. So we've arrived at G minor now, and we're, we go off again uh, with, the, with the, the tune in G minor. Um, so, and we've got the manual change to navigate as well. Um, so um, if we just have a slight easing of the tempo, just to sort of that cadence, and then um, just make sure we're at our tempo at that point. I think it will just make that corner easier. <laughs> um, do you want to go from? somewhere like the second bar. Well done. Yeah, that was nice. Because um, before that G was a bit snatched because then we were in a, a rush to jump up to the swell. Um, but that was that was really well controlled. Um, excellent. Good. And yeah, this this is all really nice and clear now. All the detail um, we can hear everything, which is brilliant. So the same thing will apply in this section regarding the um, the beats. So say if you give a strong um, leads to the to the bottom of the left hand just to make sure that that's uh, nice and rhythmic um, and then um, in this big build up um, do, we, do we all know why in French music um, they it tells us to add all the choir reeds on together and the great reeds together and um, what why does it tell us to do that because to our ears that might sound it's like too much comes on at once um, and do, do we know do we know the, the reasons behind that is it because of the ventils? Mm. Yes, so um, often you'll find um, it might tell you at the start of a piece to prepare the reeds. Um, so that's um, to actually, you know, physically pull the stops out um, of, of the, the reed stops. But then they'll have a, a, um, a ventil, a little foot pedal, where you can actually switch the wind to the, to the reeds off. Um, so the stops will be out, but they won't be sounding. And then um, at places like that, you can then add them. So it means that then all the reeds would come on together, um, which, um, you know, as I say, can sound a little bit too, too much. At, 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 so um, feel free on an organ, um, you know, where we have, um, you know, things like pistons or um, to, you know, to do it a little bit more gradually if you want. Um, mm -hmm. But um, it's just interesting to know how that, that came about, um, you know. <laughs> um, just be careful of the, the B flats yeah. and the B naturals around there as to which is which. Is which. Um, and it's, I think it's quite nice to have a slow down there as you did. Dum, bum, 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 bum. And then if we go into C minor again. Um, and then here, if you can get this top line as legato as you can. Mm -hmm. So we hear that as a, as a, as a new sort of descant on the top. Okay. <laughs> um, should we just try, um, go, go, go straight on there if you like. OK, 
Okay. Um, and then, um, yeah, again, keep the energy in the dotted rhythms there. And then let's just talk about the ending. So I wouldn't make this chord too long because um, we don't, the danger is we, we don't want that to sound like the end, do we? Yeah. And then this is, um, um, he's actually built in the, the rall in a way because of, you know, going from crotchets to minim. So he's already made the notes a bit longer and we've got the alogando. Mm. Um, so just just play that in, in a sense that, you, you know, that there's, there's still more music to come. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, so not too long on that crotchet. Um, so it's just about pacing it. And then perhaps then each chord slightly longer than the previous one. So we get a nicely paced rall rather than a sort of sequence of four random chords. <laughs> so it's, you know, it has, has a kind of organic uh, growth to it. Um, let's go, if our ears can stand it, <laughs> let's go from, from this point. We didn't get the full words that time. Yeah. <laughs> it's um yeah that that was that was really nicely paced actually, and I like what you're doing with the legato pedal there, and the and the hands a bit more separate, so um we get the continuity w with the with the distinction of the hands, so that that's that's really good, brilliant. Have you got any questions? Not really. No. Thank you. Well, thank you everybody for um, uh, first of your patience and, and staying awake <laughs> um, and, and your fabulous playing. Um, it's, um, it's a nerve wracking thing to do, um, uh, to play in front of people that you've only met today um, and, um, you know, and, and live on, on the internet as well. This is my first live masterclass as well. So, um, and I'll be on the hot seat tomorrow. Um, doing a recital, so um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll know how you all, all felt. Um, but no, it's been fabulous, and really, um, what's been really nice is, is how you all responded to, to new ideas as well. Um, and I hope um, that listening to each other, you all um, taken um, some thoughts away, and, and perhaps some pieces that you've heard today that you, you don't yet play yourself, and you think, oh, I must must go go away and learn that. Um, so uh, yes, so I hope it's all been really beneficial and it's been an absolute joy to, to work with you all. So thank you. Well, thank, thank you. you. And of course, a huge, huge uh, thank you to Francesca as well, who's, um, I, I don't know about you at home and I think about you guys uh, but it was really interesting and you were saying a lot of very relevant um, um, things about all of those pieces so thank you very much. I think we all go home a little bit more aware about those pieces of music so thank you very much. I think it's really wonderful uh, and I'm sure you guys will agree at home uh, to see and hear uh, such talent and enthusiasm um, in our younger generation of organists. It's often said the organ is a dying art, but I think, you know, looking at today's um, six organists, there's no evidence of that at all. I, I can see the organ as an instrument and as a um, community, I can see it growing and getting better and better and more, more people getting interested in it. So thank you all very much. And I want to thank you once again to Francesca. I think we should all squeeze onto the camera um, for our final sort of cheerio. I'll stand over here so I can sort of tell you where to go. So basically you need to stand around there somewhere. Go. <laughs> so let's have a look. I can, I can see the screen. So yes, uh, Jake, you're, if you step this way a little bit, that's probably, oh, watch out for my bald head. Um, then you guys need to come right round. So Nathan, Nathan, come round, come round, come round. Um, come on, keep going, keep going. You might have to crouch down. <laughs> come on, keep going. Come this way, come this way. This. I'll tell you when to stop. I promise. Keep going. 
Further, 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 further. <laughs> Keep coming. Further. That's it. And Francesca, you're not quite in either. Still not in. No, you can come around here. You come head. right down here. <laughs> there we go. Now we're all in, I think. Yes. Nathan, you're still not quite in. Come on, this way. <laughs> this is important. All right. So, thank you all for watching. <laughs> Listen to Francesca's recital tomorrow night, 8 o'clock. Yes. 8 o'clock. It's um, pretty good. You don't want to miss it. So, after three, we all say cheerio, all right? So, in three, two, one. Cheerio! cheerio. Oh, my gosh. That's so cheesy. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Take care.